A very warm welcome to our viewers today for our literary program. Today with us we have a young talent. Her name is Natalie Kharkongor. Welcome to our program, Natalie. Hi, Nat thank you. <laughs> so, Natalie, you are a writer, yes. a budding writer, and a young student who is pursuing your masters in philosophy, right? Yes, yes. So, tell me something about yourself. How? What made you choose? or go into writing? Uh, see, uh, since uh, the beginning I was like uh, so interested in poetries or quotes and then maybe for, uh, young, while I was like so small, I used to read some quotes but then I don't know if it's my original or somewhere, I read it somewhere and then I write it down. But when I grow up, I started to write my own Thing, that's when I know it's my original writing. I don't have the courage to show it to anyone, so I just like keep it. Right. And then when I grow up, I meet one friend and she's like, just pose it, pose it on your WhatsApp and then I do it. Mm -hmm. I do it and then I don't have that much courage to show it much to the world. But then when my parents like read my writings and then they supported me. So yeah, that's where it started. Okay, that's wonderful. I think as young people, you know, you're not sure of and uh, you have so much of talent yeah. and you're thinking and it's very important to see that, uh, you know, your parents support and your friend encouraged you. Yes. So when you started writing, so you started writing with just quotes or yes. it was just like random thoughts also? Just random thoughts. But then when I reread it, there are times when like I need something for myself, I reread them, but then I think about it. And I was like, maybe someone out there is really need these words, really need to hear these words. That's when I started posting it on social media and all. Okay, yes. So you have, okay, when you say about social media, I would like to ask, you have a handle in Instagram, right? Yes. So can you just talk about a little bit about your handle so that our young viewers and a lot of uh, parents out there who are watching a program today can check the uh, Instagram handle and also read through those uh, quotes. I name my Instagram handle as uh, the pen down quotes, pen down thoughts. Right. I name it as pen down thoughts, and then when I come up with that title, I was like, I have to give one name which means a lot to me. Right. So it's the thoughts which I have pen it down. That's right. when I name it. Very very articulately. What you yes. know? What the thoughts which are coming to your mind? You are yes. you know you're writing it down, and these are basically I have gone through, but for our viewers. You know, we have seen that you have uh, written down quotes in form of quotes. Yes. Uh, so is it something you've gone through or is something you think that the, you know, the people could relate to, like you said, yes. or you yourself, you have experienced also? There are a few, uh, few writings which I'm thinking like maybe uh, someone out there is n will need to read that one, will need to, to know that there's hope out there. Right. So even there are things which I wanted to tell myself like, I have to do it. I have to chase my dreams. There are quotes out there that I posted about chasing dreams and also like to be strong, not to be that soft and all. Right. Yes. So that's wonderful. So I think when, when um, especially when it comes to writers, it's always with you go through or phase through yes. and you know, you can express through writing. But you also chose a field which is philosophy. Okay, yes. that's also very deep, of course. You know, if you are to relate, of course, you know, you have to think. Yes. So, what made you choose and um, how do you see yourself as a philosophy student too? As a philosophy student, I might choose this uh, field as a, like to educate other people. Maybe not only just about like philosophy, but about life itself, like to look life in a broad sense. Right. Since um, when I take philosophy, my teacher always say that we students, we philosophers have to like, look life in a wide sense, not just in a narrow sense. Right. So we have to do it like that. And then philosophy not only tells us about uh, like academically, but also it taught us for life itself, like as yes, a whole. Yes, exactly. So that is somewhere, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, it's, it's a coincidence or perhaps it's uh, irony that, uh, you know, you're, you're writing something which you're feeling and philosophy has a broader yes. perspective of life and the depth of life, what you yes. said. And I think it really goes in tandem with it because you can relate and correlate what you said. So what made you think of encouraging? Because you felt there's a lack of encouragement for young people. Yes. A lot of young people nowadays, maybe this, uh, I know that they suffer 
within themselves and they don't show it out loud. They nice. don't show to the world. They don't tell anyone like they they are suffering. Let's talk about like mental health. Right. Nobody would like go to the doctor. We have yeah. less people who would be brave enough to tell that they are really suffering. Very true. This is something which is very, very, um, very, very poignant point you have made, especially with yeah. younger people. Yeah. You know, because it is still a taboo, and the best way of one of the way of expressing or getting encouraged is one is through dialogue, and the other, I think, it's very important what you said, expressing yes. encouraging words. Sometimes, when a young person, or even for us, you know, when we hear a simple word of encouragement, it goes a long, long way. Yeah. So I'm glad that you know you are. As a young person yourself, you are going through a lot and is also trying to encourage young people. You know, I would want uh, to put forward a question through the, you know, woman's centric lens way. As young woman yourself, you know, how do you think the scenario of uh, writing or expressing through, say, as in a writer or an artist in any form, as a woman, the challenges are, do you think, especially for younger people? Like, for us, younger people, see, if we talk about social media, especially for girls, if we post our personal picture, we will get more likes rather than like posting the paintings which we have painted or the writings which we have written, we get lesser likes. So I think for us, uh, we face that challenge. Like people would literally look us only for our picture, right? only our faces and not what we think and what we do. Unfortunately, what you said is true because again we see that the disparity of our thinking unfortunately and I think this needs to be a wake up call for our viewers, for our parents, especially for younger people. You know, they objectify yes. unfortunately. That objectification is then more of the depth like what you say about the write-ups or something quotes or something which is more deep. Yeah. People don't tend to. Uh, coming back to one part of it, especially when digitization post-pandemic, how do you think or what do you think among your friends or your age group, you know, uh, the challenges of a uh, paper book, like you have published, yeah. you know, a um, book, uh, you know, poetry collection, okay, uh, called Endless Wings. So um, when you look at it, when you are post, you know, actually publishing a book, paper book, mm -hmm. and now with all digitization happening, do you think your own contemporary or your own friends pick up a book or they're more likely to go digital and surf through, say, even an Instagram post or, or say, WordPress, where you also write? Yes. Most likely, um, my friends would prefer a paper book. That's most, very... Most likely. It's freshening to uh, hear that yeah. for a change. But, like, uh, for... In general, people would choose to read through their phones or laptop. They won't open their book. Yes. So, f talking about paper books, uh, they would... They don't like uh, like reading it through book, but through mobile phones or laptop, they would just scroll it. No, it's yes. quite easy for them. Yes, yeah, so there's a big challenge when we talk yes. about paper book and all. But then, as long as if they're reading the content, so as per your thinking, that means it has to be. What would you prefer, and what would you choose to reach to a you know wider crowd for your writers? For a wider crowd, I think I would choose social media because everyone now has their own account they have their own phones phones are always in their hands so i think social media would be the best to like promote my writing but then for myself i think i would choose a paper book right it's quite it's like i have something in my hand something it's like a trophy for me yeah to have it's the feel of the yes. book i can understand so you see it's, it's like even in today's world and especially with our theme you know again coming mm. back to a woman-centric theme uh, the caption being like digital or make it at all equal i think it is very important to choose a hybrid kind of what you said yeah. because then you can reach to more younger lot or more bigger audience now, especially. So when we talk about um, your poetries, how did that come about? How did you start writing poetry? Because when we started a conversation, you said that you know you were into quotes, which were encouraging. Mm -hmm. So how did you end up with a poetry collection and that to a published one? Can you just you know talk about a little bit about yes. that? For me, um, I used to write a lot, and then later on. I was thinking, I always have this dream, like I, I want to publish a book, I want to have my own book. So I started writing. When I'm writing, I don't have that uh, much courage, like I said, mm -hmm. to post it or to publish it. But then 
it it's that one night I have that little insane courage like to contact the publishers. I can I used to do like um research for the publishing house. I, I research, but then that one night I have this little insane courage like I would I want to do it. I want to do it, and then I just like that night only I contact that that publishers, and he's like, "Will you?" Submit your manuscript now. I told him, just give me one week. I haven't even have the name yet for my book, but then I have those quotes written. I have poetry written, already written. So I just chose because it's my first book. I don't have much courage to give all of them in one go. So I just choose okay. some of them and then I submit it to him. And then he did it. Maybe um, one one month after he published that, the book. Okay, that's wonderful. How did you come about the name Windless, uh, you know, Endless Wings? Endless Wings is about um, the people around me because they have encouraged me. So one people means one feather. It comes up to form a wing. Okay. So, so the concept means... is basically when you say Endless Wings, the concept behind is each and every person representing a wing, yes. uh, you know, a feather, a feather, and, and uh, encouraging you for that. Yes. And that's how you ended up with the name. That's beautiful. Yes. And, um, you know, would you uh, read some lines, few lines? Oh, yes, sure. That'll be really nice for our viewers also. Um, this one means a lot to me. So I might go with now. Yes. Tell me your battles, the one you usually bottle up inside. The ones that wasn't written on a newspaper. Show me the wounds. The one that never bleed, like the internal injuries that give insidious damages after. Show me the scars of your heart, the ones you feel most betrayed, the ones that kills you a little more every day. Help me get into that busy mind of yours, no matter how tangled those chaos are. Maybe that's where mine would feel more secure. Oh, that's wonderful. I hope our viewers are enjoying the quotes. And uh, when we say it, you are in the process of writing some more yes. uh, new, uh, are you in the planning of uh, writing poems or just poems. quotes? It's a collection it's a, of poems? It's a collection of both actually. I write because like I said, I write whatever comes to my mind. So I just collect them and publish it. Maybe. Okay. So you're on the process of writing. Yes. Okay. So when you are aware, these are also again inspirations or what you are going through? It's kind of love quotes, okay. love, poetry and also motivation is there. Okay. About it. So uh, the next part, which we'll hopefully see soon, uh, it's about love poems or yes. just love quotes? Love poems and quotes combined together. Okay. That's, uh, that's wonderful. So I think uh, I had young people. Uh, will relate to that, especially yes. when, you know, the young budding love. I'm sure, I hope our young people could connect to that. That's, you know, we see a lot of diversity in your, which is beautiful. Like, you know, of course, coming, like, again, repeating myself for being a philosophy student. So you have the depth of life and yourself being able to express it um, through, you know, your words. And now it's a change. You had a very encouraging ones and now you have the love quotes and poetry, which is in a way also encouraging. So when you say about that, uh, we would like you to read a few lines um, about uh, the next which you're writing. Okay. But uh, before that, we would also want to know, how do you see yourself in the future? Using more of, like you said, you want to put it across as a you know, hybrid thing. But um, would you... How would you like to, you know, be more active in the sense of where do you see yourself heading towards? See, writing would be my hobby. I would choose this as my hobby. I can't just like pressure myself and then it would be so fake. My writing would be so fake if I think about what people will like. Right. It's about myself. It's about writing what I wanted to write. It's about my thoughts. So I don't want to keep that as my profession because it would give me a lot of pressure and my writings would be fake. I would choose um, like philosophy as my profession. I would choose teaching in the future. I might teach maybe in colleges or university. Okay, so yeah, what you said, I think sometimes it's very hard, especially like for a young person or anyone for that matter coming from artistic background, that pressure of expectations. Yes. And you have very, very honestly put it across and I, really want our young viewers to relate to this because sometimes when you are expecting so much from yourself the pressure bogs you down and what you said is like it would be fake because then you expect it to fake. then you have to keep on instead of coming in naturally 
you will be you know forced to your hands will be tied because there are expectations there are deadlines yeah. to meet and then otherwise you will not be quote unquote called a writer yeah. so i think that is a very very honest thing so our young people who are watching today though you know you want to charter out into writing and you need a lot of encouragement hopefully you'll get some from your parents or friends or even relating to her check out please check out her insta page so that you can get encouraged because her quotes are very encouraging having said that how she very very honestly put across i hope a young people out there artists who wants to become budding artists or start you know to write please don't feel the pressure what she said just because you're writing it's fine express yourself don't stop yourself from writing but also don't limit yourself don't feel pressured because like yes. how you have said natalie it's very very honest you know to come across and be very open about that yes if i'm pressured into something then It my will writing be. will be very fake and it's a big statement and it's a very honest statement because sometimes most of the writers are so pressured but otherwise they believe that they you know that tag of being yes. a writer will move away. but once a writer you can always express and keep on expressing always, yeah. more, more naturally okay coming to that um when you're saying uh, your write ups and uh, like i was telling you what it will be a hobby so would like even as a part of hobby and you'll be writing would you be open up to having say slam poetry sessions or you yes, know uh, things sure, like I that will. because i think this also gives you a lot of creative field to interact yes. with other artists other. also so uh, is this something you would uh, in future perhaps uh, i might think do of? it yes as my part time i would surely do it i won't ever leave poetry <laughs> Yes that's uh, wonderful and um, can you just read us few lines from the whatever you choose from your the unpublished one. unpublished one so our viewers are very lucky to get a glimpse of and hear few lines from her unpublished book I named this poem as Let, uh, let's dare ourselves let's dare ourselves to undress our souls let's allow them to discover both the darkness and the rainbows so that nothing but love remains the kind of love that did more to bend than break At the times when your petals are dry and ready to break, fear not, for beside you I will always choose to stay. For love will be the flambeau of the dark, loyalty and respect will be the calm for a stormy heart. Care will be the key to unlocking the most hidden parts of your fears, and commitment will be the solution when trouble appears. So let's do everything that we can and hold my hand and leave the rest to the Almighty's plan. Okay wonderful thank you so much for sharing these lines so when you know it's a beautiful beautiful poem so what inspired you if you could just at least you know give our viewers a little bit of you know uh, a, a little bit of background if not so much about this, this this poem it's like about we we know that in today's generation people would choose love as something so casual right but this poem would literally tell it tell us readers everyone like we should not give up even if troubles are there we should not give up we should hold each other's hand like we should not leave when troubles are there we should be there even in in the worst situation or the good situation we should always be there and leave everything to the almighty which he would show us a way how to go about it i think it's wonderful you know because especially again you know i hope our young viewers would relate to it's very very powerful yes. very very powerful like what you said i yes it we see a significant uh, thing of what you said um uh, about today's generation yeah. unfortunately again what they need to portray what they need to behave but having faith and uh, being strong to deal with ups and downs i think it it's very very powerful words it's beautiful words you know we unfortunately we can continue so much and so much there is but we're just left with a little bit of time so before winding up what would you say you know few words for our young artists or budding uh, writers out there like you what would you say what would your you know words be of encouragement for them i would like to encourage you to write your heart out it doesn't matter if there's something wrong in it it doesn't matter if it's too dark or it's it's too deep you should write it you should let your heart out so that you will feel light even for yourself and i'm sure that there's people out there who would love to read your writings who would feel encouraged reading them 
like and also like you know one one of the thing i would like to ask you and especially for a young woman like we said especially mm -hmm. when you said which is a very very another significant point you said that when you put across your pictures you have more like then you know and the challenges keep on piling you know mm -hmm. to reach out your word or express yourself what would you say specifically to young women out there to young women if you have a talent like painting or singing or writing for that matter you should like go go with it don't just uh, post things which people which you think people will like just post the things which you like because let's talk about instagram it's your account you can post whatever you want your writings your painting let's say also your pictures if you're interested in modeling so it's like that you have to just follow your own instinct follow your dreams and not listen like to people and just do whatever you like without hurting anyone you know right. the, the think... main thing is without hurting a, anyone mm -hmm. so you just chase your dreams just do it uh, um, see the last parting words chase your dreams no matter what and i love the way you said that you know it is very sometimes for likes we tend to become yes. people pleasers again coming back to what you said that if you're expected and that you know that uh, your hands get tied then you are you become more fake so instead of being that put your heart across something which you believe in not because to please people but what you really connect to so that young people around or whoever feels the same way can also connect to you with that thank you for watching our program and thank you natalie for thank being you. a part thank of our program it was wonderful you having coming. you and uh, thank you viewers for joining us i hope you enjoyed and connected with our young talent artist here today thank you so much <laughs>